What does that mean? That means that some of them old models that's being used to do some of these things got to get thrown out, trashed, and burned. Mm -hmm. And we got to change that. But that's my cross to bear. In any case, one thing I did want to say, and that had to do with uh, um, what you said, you brought Todd, Todd into this. Look, everybody in this room is involved in theater. So in a sense, you could say we're all partially insane. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But we still want to do it when we leave the room, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, that means that some of us are more successful than others. And some of us have taken the initiative to find out what that means. We've already started talking in between these meetings. These meetings have started the process, but nobody's talking about what's going on in between the breakout and on the side after the breakout. And because I know I'm working, I don't know about the rest of y'all, but you know, I'm working. So, and partnerships is just one part of it. The other question, and this is something that's we haven't been able to address totally, didn't expect to address it totally. You know, there's always going to be this disparity in terms of resources, okay? And it, some people think of it in terms of big theater, small theater. I'm looking at it through another lens, okay? And I don't know I can affect the change in that way, unless I get a whole lot of money tomorrow. Maybe mm -hmm. I can. But what I can do is make people start thinking about how they can create, create, a source of income that has nothing to do and maybe everything to do with what they got on their stages. Mm. Yeah, I wanted to dovetail just for a second into international work. Um, <clears throat> uh, Amelia talked to you yesterday about the program at TCG, which helped us launch uh, some international work with Mexico about, this is about ten year, eight, nine years ago, and we've kept the relationship ever since. And then um, NNPN was um, visionary enough to let me try a production uh, through our work with this theater company in Mexico City. Um, I can't tell you what a boon it is for uh, um, American playwrights to have their work done in other countries um, and to have it, for example, the, the, uh, translated into Spanish and done at theaters throughout Latin America. Um, there's a real hunger for international work in Latin America. Um, there's tremendous connections with European theaters and Eastern European theaters, much more than there is with this country. Um, but what happens sometimes when you do international work, <clears throat> and I know a lot of you do some with presenter organizations, but if you work on text-based work uh, internationally, it sometimes will open doors in your own community you didn't know were there because of making connections with your own community. And that's what happened with doing one of the plays that we worked with a Mexican playwright uh, who wrote about indigenous people on the border, which suddenly opened up a whole new world for us um, that we hadn't even looked at in our own backyard. So I, I think that jumping in and doing international work is really fruitful. And it, it goes to a lot of things that Lisa Crone was saying yesterday about different audiences. A playwright not only sees a different audiences in this country, but a different audience in Mexico City versus an audience in this country, which happens to be a very well-heeled, um, fairly um, deep-pocketed kind of audience that goes to theater in Mexico City that is not the same audience that I have in Tucson. Um, so it's, it's really interesting. They, they were, they're sometimes very disconnected with the social issues of the border, even though they should be, just like in this country. We're coming up on lunch. Is there anything about this um, partnerships, networks, alignment well, wanna, question I'll, that uh, some of the people who have, Wendy, you've been writing notes over there, and I'm kind of skipping over you. Is there something that you put on your page that you want to put out in the room? No, I think, I think most, not really. <laughs> I think, okay. uh, not really. I, I think, okay. uh, yeah, I think most things have been said, but All I do, right. I do think That's that, the beauty of the yeah, form. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, I think that, that, that Jen Jennifer talked about, you know, the, the dangers can come when people are not communicating up front yes, about, sure. you know, what the needs are and what they can provide. And if that, that's when you get into trouble, you know, so I, I appreciated that comment. There's a different kind of partnership that I wanted to, there's a different kind of partnership I wanted to mention. We have a scene shot, we build our sets. And now we've been building sets for Theater La Dida, um, the Ordway. We are, we are partnering and networking with our scene shop with <coughs> other um, theater companies in the Twin Cities. And when people heard word of it, 
the response was, are we doing it as a revenue generator? Not really. You know, it wasn't like the sky is falling, we need to make money. It actually was sharing of resource. And our, our TD, Jason, is going out and finding additional stuff. So that's a different kind of in-town partnership These network. These are the resources that keep trying to get us off of money as the only possibility, although it's an important um, equalizer. But what are the things that we already have that we're not capitalizing? Because we're really not talking about, I mean, we've talked a lot about abundance, and I think that uh, that the flip side of that beautiful coin is replication, which is expensive and unhealthy. And I think that partnerships are essential to uh, partnerships amongst people who know each other and know each other's resources. And as you were saying, I, uh, as you were saying, fairly, I know you do this really well, but you don't. And can I put you together so you all don't have to reinvent twenty-seven Thank you, Jesus. wheels that don't right. don't roll? Right. Um, uh, I think in this moment. In this moment of abundance, it's even more important mm -hmm. to hook up the sources with the networks that can right. put those sources out into the field without replication, which is so expensive and draining and unhealthy. I would add to that in terms of just perhaps a, another, I don't know if it's a bright spot, but the um, uh, I reference Alliance for Artist Communities, they did mm -hmm. a really comprehensive study on residents. Alliance for Artist Communities, if you didn't hear that, and you don't know them, check check into that. Yeah, they, uh, they're about to release a study, uh, release a report on, on their findings. And um, I, I referenced the dance <coughs> explorations that they've been doing, but I think a lot of it is, is comparable for mm -hmm. issues here. But um, be on the lookout. For, I saw an early draft, and it's pretty, it's pretty comprehensive. So be on the lookout for that in the next month or so, I think. I, 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 just, I, just, I, just, yeah, uh, I spent a lot of years talking about partnership from a business model standpoint, and I, bless you, left on purpose. And uh, I just want to, I guess, I, I walk away from this morning sessions feeling like partnerships have to start and, and be centered off of artists. And that it's so easy. Someone was defining really beautifully before, like you have to articulate for yourself the difference between partnership and relationship, and that those can mean, and they have to mean different things. And that each organization, the way that Wendy runs her organization, the way Jason runs his organization, the way Mark runs his, they're, they're as individual as the people who have been uh, chosen by those boards or whatever to be in these positions, and that they're there, and that the. Uh, sometimes I feel in this conference like we're kind of going at artistic leaders a little bit. I'm not defending anyone. I'm just sort of saying in a way to say like here's what they're not doing, and the incredible the the artistic directors or or, or, or people in these sort of positions who are whose staffs can whose staffs can go out into the community and talk really specifically, or whose, or whose partners can say, this is what the O'Neill is doing. This is what we're working on. This is what they're about. Those are the organizations that it's easier to be transparent with, because you know what the number's up to. You're very clear. No one doesn't know what you and they are up to. And I think that the more we can uh, connect with those leaders and those organizations who are that specific and articulate about the way they partner. That's part of the transparency. And the other flip side is where it's not happening is to challenge all of us, all of us who are leaders at organizations, to do better at actually being clear and more specific about how we support and where we support and why we support then I think we are actually able to be more uh, in service of those artists. And that, to me, is where partnership has to, at the service of the artists. Uh, one of the most important things you learn, though, is that <laughs> you can't work with everybody. No. Right. Yeah, no. No, 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 you shouldn't. You can't work with everybody. That's the first thing. That's the first thing. You're right. But the second thing is that everybody won't want to work with you. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, it's good to know that. You, you, <laughs> sometimes you don't. Yeah. Sometimes you do, but you need to discover it as soon as you can and move on to the next. So he